Welcome to Around the Peninsula. I'm Liz Brown Swanson and so excited to be at the beautiful Oceanfront Terranera Resort in Rancho Palos Verdes on Earth Day. We are going to celebrate Mother Earth together and talk to the Terranea team, including the resort's new president, Ralph Grippo. We're also going to meet with the legendary resident falconer, Joe Roy III, and so much more. Terranea has been named one of the 500 best hotels on this earth, and we're going to find out just how this resort, along with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, are working hard to protect our environment. So now to kick off the show, let's check in with the resort's new president, Ralph Grippo. It's, it's a pleasure to be here on Earth Day. Thank you very much. My name is Ralph Grippo. I'm the new president of Terranea Resort, and I'm honored and truly a joy to be here. So thank you for this opportunity to say hello to the community. Tell us about your first weeks on the job. I think, what did you start? We're on week of... three, so uh, I haven't figured it all out. It's a 102-acre resort, which is really spectacular. So I, I, I'm clearly getting my steps in along the way between Nelson's, the spa, golf, uh, and all the other facilities around the resort. It's really a special place, but the most important part of the past few weeks has really been spending time with our staff and our employees and getting to know them, building a relationship. I, you know, we're in a relationship business, whether it's with our staff, then the customers, and then everybody within the community. So it's, uh, it's been a true joy uh, to be part of this resort the past few weeks, and I'm looking forward for the future. You are a veteran in uh, luxury resorts. Yeah, I know your experience spans more than 30 years. Want to give us a little bit about your background so the community can get to know you? Absolutely. Well, I, I say I defected from the East Coast many years ago because of beautiful days like this. Uh, and I spent 18 years with Ritz Carlton in a few places around the world, anywhere between uh, Pasadena, Marina del Rey, Boston, New York, Shanghai, China, Osaka, Japan, a few stops in between. Uh, and really just fell in love with our industry and wanted to continue you know, growing in, in this capacity and, and taking care of customers and employees. And then a few years back, about 11 years ago, I opened the resort at Pelican Hill down in Newport Beach, which was just a joy to do so. Uh, and so to transition to here in Palos Verdes and be part of this community uh, and take Terran A into the future is, is really an honor. Terry Hack, who was your predecessor, was with this resort since opening day in 2009, and um, she was an incredible leader. We wish her much success in her new promotion within the parent company, Lowe's. Um, but uh, I don't know if she shared any uh, tips and what is sort of your leadership uh, style going to be here? Sure. Well, Terry and I have known each other for a long time as well, so uh, it's been a wonderful transition. Um, I th some of the differences are we. we We've, we just want to build on the great success that we've had over 12 years. And Sardar will be some of the refinement and just doing a few little things different and really uh, how we approach service to, uh, you know, some of its personalizing guest experiences, some of it's a little bit more high touch that perhaps we've done in the past. So we've had great success and it'll li literally be a lot of little things. So, you know, coming out of COVID has been hard for a lot of businesses. Uh, so, you know, we've got some uh, great talent but we haven't spent the past two years training and being as engaged because of, of life the way it was. So getting back to some of the basics and doing a few things different, you know, we're already blessed with one of the most you know, magical locations on the planet. We have a beautiful facility. We've got a great team. Uh, so I'm excited to, you know, take take the, the lead uh, into the future with our people. Paranea is a, you know, economic powerhouse for our local economy, generating millions of dollars since opening for our, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes through the transient occupancy tax. Um, so tell us more about, like, how the revenues are looking for the next fiscal year and what, what the city can expect in that kind of thing. Well, everybody can expect, it, it's been a, it's going to be a banner year. It already is, which is, you know, a bit shocking where, you know, just 60, 90, 120 days ago, or certainly a few months ago, we all wondered what life would be like. Uh, but uh, business has never been better, quite frankly. Um, so we, we look forward to that continuing. The challenges that everyone's facing, and quite frankly, we're faring quite well, is, is employment and people and getting the right people. You know, it's easy to perhaps find an individual, but you know, I don't believe you could teach people to care, smile, uh, be nice. So to find people that uh, want to, you know, that have that character, if you will, and then have the ability to do what we're going to need them to do, whether we need to teach them how to cook, park a car, uh, wash dishes, make beds, uh, check people in. you. Finding those people, and whether these days or any day, uh, will be a bit of a challenge, always is, and then, uh, and then training and having fun along the way. Right now, what do you have, about 800 employees we here? Have just over 800 employees. Wow. Thanks for joining us here, Ralph Grippo, and congratulations on your new job of being Terranea's new president. Thank you, Liz.
Making Terranea memories here on Earth Day could be anything from decorating a Palisverde's blue butterfly cookie to taking out a kayak for a coastal cleanup. So now let's go over to Terranea's Point Discovery Center to check out all the eco-friendly activities here. Good afternoon, my name is Andrea DeConing. I'm the marketing manager here at Terranea Resort. We are here at Point Discovery where we have all of our activities for Earth Day where we're really excited to celebrate. Um, here at Terranea we do say that every day is Earth Day and that's because we welcome guests, the community and visitors to really enjoy the land and the property every single day throughout the year. Um, but for Earth Day specifically we do have different activities such as cookie cookie kits, um, eco-friendly art activities, nature walks, kayaking, um, and a lot of other activities as well. All year long, we do have a variety of activities that take place on property. Everything from guided uh, tide pooling, to uh, fishing, to kayaking, tide pooling, nature walks, uh, anything that a guest would like to experience, we set them up with an adventure concierge where they can really curate their activities and experience according to what they want to do. So at Terranea, we are dedicated to protecting the environment and, uh, and the land around us. And that's everything from farm to table, where we have our garden close by, we have a garden our, at Marcel, and then also up the road where we get vegetables, um, um, throughout the year so it's very fresh and seasonable. Um, we also say sea to table where we gather the, the ocean water and our kelp and we have a sea salt conservatory where we actually dry the sea salt and we uh, season it with different flavors and then we're able to use that um, throughout the property as well. So you're getting that rich salt that's um, rich in magnesium and different um, vitamins as well. Share some of what's coming up this spring and summer. Absolutely, we have a lot coming up this year that we're thrilled to share with our guests coming up. Um, first off, we have Mother's Day, so to spoil all the moms out there, we have our ballroom brunch um, that has uh, award-winning chefs that will be uh, featuring some great food items there. Um, also to spoil mom, we have the, the spa facilities and uh, retail for shopping too. Uh, then coming up, we have Memorial Day, so we have our sound series kicking off, a lot of live music. It'll be really fun themed activities for Memorial Day. Um, and then next we come into June where we have Pride Month um, that we're celebrating throughout the month with different fun offers. We also have World Oceans Day where we're working with Marine Mammal Care Center. Um, and then Father's Day where it's always great to have dad go to the links and, and get some uh, swings in at our par three nine hole golf course too. There's so many ways to enjoy the grounds, whether it's to come by here, do an activity at Point Discovery, take a nature walk, watch for the whales. What is your favorite Zen spot here? That's a great question, and my favorite Zen spot, it's a secret spot on property, it's actually the ocean room at the spa at Terranea. Um, I actually used to work at the spa, I started at the spa um, about a little over 10 years ago, and that is my favorite spot on property. You can see the sunrise and the sunset in the same location from that balcony, and while you're getting a treatment, you um, actually hear the waves coming through and it's just the most relaxing place you could you could be on property in my opinion. <laughs> and one thing I haven't mentioned this whole program, I believe the name Terranea actually means earth, yes? It does, yes, absolutely. So we're true to our, our brand, true to the foundation and really trying to protect um, the land and, and keep it in a better place than um, how we found it. One of the most incredible ways to feel tapped into nature here is to spend time with Terranea's resident falconer, Joe Roy. So let's get soaring with Joe. For me, it's about the experience. It's about the adrenaline rush. It's about watching ecology, natural selection, predator prey. It's about waking up with sunrise and seeing something as fast as a falcon.
Hi, my name is Joe Roy. I am the falconer here at the Terranea Resort in Ranchos Palos Verdes, California. I have the most unlikely job description. I am seagull harasser in charge. If you wonder why they're harassing seagulls at Palos Verdes, you probably don't live in Palos Verdes. We have a lot of seagulls here on the Pacific Ocean, particularly in Southern California. Some of these seagulls can be bad actors in the sense that they can sleep on buildings, swim in pools, scoop food off tables, and otherwise poop on everything in sight. Um, we are not... <laughs> opposed to seagulls, we simply encourage them to be in the ocean. I am not here as an exterminator, I am here as an intimidator. I bring a, a variety of birds of prey, namely falcons, uh, I bring a hawk uh, as a means of intimidating seagulls so they're not spending their days here bothering guests as they once used to. I also bring an owl with me, this is Albert. Albert is more um, educational entertainment value than uh, bird harassment. He's been with me for quite a while now and he's actually a guest favorite. He's the most photographed bird in the place. I've been with Terranea I think now for seven years. I'm kind of losing track. Um, I have been a lifelong falconer. I did not get into the art of falconry as a means of generating income. Um, that came as a byproduct that came much later. I am an actual practicing falconer. When I am not at Terranea in the fall and winter months, I'm generally off-site hunting things like waterfowl and rabbits and hare with hawks and falcons. Um, I was introduced to Terranea roughly seven years ago by an acquaintance of mine. The fit that I have in terms of skill set, lifelong falconer and um, longtime educator fit really well with Terranea. So I'm not only able to help them out with their seagull uh, intractable problem as it once had been. Today we have no seagulls causing trouble. We have a lot of seagulls in the ocean, none in Terranea. Um, but I'm also really enjoying my time by helping guys better understand why I'm here and perhaps more importantly, the role these birds play in our ecology. I am a strong advocate of conservation. Um, those things that I want to conserve are not just the birds of prey, which I'm most interested in, but also habitat. Without habitat, we have um, less opportunity for wildlife, including birds of prey. I'm happy to share these experiences with our guests. One of the main things I enjoy doing is touching them, um, helping them touch in with the wildlife that we have here at Terranea, which is abundant, which is diverse, uh, widespread, and um, certainly worthy of engagement. I know we've got Albert here. Are there are other birds that are over there in the cart that we can get video of, or who do we got here with oh, you today? Oh, yeah. So in the front seat is Tomahawk. He's the smallest bird of prey that I fly here, a male Harris's hawk. Um, I have a female named Alaka that I used to fly here daily. She's no longer welcome. Uh, she looks to me like she's interested in dogs the way that she looks at rabbits. She's interested in rabbits too. So no more Alaka, which is a bummer for me because I miss her being here. But Tomahawk is a good fill-in. He's been with me now for four years. Uh, the bird in the back, the pretty white bird, probably the prettiest falcon that I fly. His name is Thor. He's a hybridized falcon, mostly Arctic genetics. If you get a chance to come by Terranea and we have open campus, if you're a local community member, you are free to come walk these grounds. Um, I would encourage you to do so between the hours of sunrise and nine o'clock. Usually by about nine o'clock, I'm scheduled with guests and I'm otherwise entertaining people. But for an hour, two hours in the morning, that white falcon flies free in this complex. He comes and goes, he does what he wants. He will cover miles over that period of time. One of the questions that I get here at Terranea probably most often is, do they come back? To which I say, yes, otherwise I could fly each one of them exactly one time. <laughs> I buy these birds from aviaries, unless I happen to be working for a particular aviary. Um, so they can be expensive, and moreover, the training that I put into them is laborious. It's a labor of love, but there's a lot of work involved, so I don't like to lose them often. So um, the next question that I get is probably how or why do they come back? They come back because I fly them on an appetite. I carry food in my bag. Um, when they come back to me is when they uh, are fed breakfast. So I fly them on a little bit of an appetite. What I'm shooting for is peak athleticism. These birds are not malnourished. They're not in a starvation mode. But when they're ready for breakfast, um, they're ready to come in and I feed them and that's kind of how that's operationalized. More so, what I really would just want the guests to know is that when they come to Terranea, um, we have a lot of engaging things, aside from all of the wildlife that is here, and we have endless wildlife. My One of my greatest joys of life is working on the beach. I see whales, I see dolphins, I see osprey, I see peregrines, um, I see pelicans, I see shorebirds, I see um, all kinds of interesting animals, and I meet people from around the globe at this fun, engaging place. Um, they can jump on a kayak, they can shoot archery, they can go on a horseback ride, they can go on a tour. They can come hang out with me for a couple hours. We'll go fly birds together um, and otherwise enjoy really good meals. Um, we have a lot of walking trails. We have things for people to do if they want to be sedentary or mobile, whatever it is you want to do. Come to Terranea, come meet me, and we'll do some fun things together. I could absolutely spend all day with Joe and his birds. They are magical. 
So next up on the show, we're going to now fly over to Rancho Palos Verde City Hall, just up the way from Terranea, to meet with RPV's city manager, Ara Moranian, where he is going to share more on the city's goals to protect the environment and preserve open space. Hi, I'm Ara Moranian, Rancho Palos Verde City Manager, and I'm here at City Hall, which we are so fortunate to be surrounded by the Alta Vicente Reserve, which is a sub area of the overall 1400 acre Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. And I am thrilled to be here to talk to you about Earth Day and, and our role in, in helping preserve our planet. The city of Rancho Palos Verdes is very committed to protecting the environment and its natural resources. In fact, it was the, the central to the city's formation back in 1973 and is reflected in the city council goals as well as the city's general plan. Part of the city's commitment to the environment, back in um, 2019, the city council, after spending nearly 20 years in preparing its natural communities conservation plan and habitat conservation plan, adopted it. And, and what it essentially does is it protects in perpetuity the city and its environment. And so that we, we have been a part of that process. And in addition to that, uh, here at City Hall, uh, over a broad range of services provided by the various departments, we are committed in promoting water and energy conservation, recycling, and green building. So in 2018, the city has received the Beacon Spotlight Award for our greenhouse, our efforts in, in reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And then recently, we were also the recipient of the gold level designation for Solar Foundation Soul Smart. Uh, award for our role in streamlining and it, providing efficient permitting process for those individuals who want to install solar panels. So the city offers a variety of programs to our residents to help uh, promote the reduction of waste. And so in partnership with our residential waste hauler, EDCO, as well as with Los Angeles County, we offer events here at City Hall where residents can come and and. Uh, dispose their e-waste. They're also able to come a couple times a year where we have the household hazardous uh, waste program where they can come and fill their car up with some of the their waste from their house. So in addition to the various programs that we offer residents here at City Hall, the city is also working in partnership with the South Bay City's Council of Governments to assess and implement the city's emission reduction action plan. At the moment, we are currently assessing our target goals, which were intended to meet uh, or reduce our electricity consumption by 15% based on 2005 levels. And it looks as though we're meeting that target. Effective January 1st, the state now requires that organic foods be recycled as opposed to being thrown in the trash and ending up in the landfills. So through our partnership with EDCO, we began rolling out the organic recycling program, the organic foods recycling program. It began on April 4th and it, residents are being asked now to to uh, place their food scraps in their green bin as opposed to the gray bin and what happens is the food doesn't end up in the landfills it's actually ending up in in recycling plants that can be converted into composting mulch and other uh, recycling uh, products. Water conservation is paramount at the moment. As, as we all know, we are in a state designated drought. We're being asked to conserve water. We're working very closely with Cal Water and the, the West Basin Municipal Water District in educating the public in efforts to uh, save water. So, so as, as I mentioned, we're here at City Hall, which is surrounded by the Alta Vicente Reserve, which is a sub area of the overall 1,400 acre Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. Well, as part of the city's NCCP HCP, it contemplates acquiring additional land for, for habitat protection as a wildlife corridor. Well, I'm very pleased to report that the city, in partnership with the Palos Verdes Land 
Land Conservancy has been working with a, a property owner here and we are very close to closing the deal on acquiring 96 acres of the Plum Tree property and the Lower Filiorn property that will be enrolled in the preserve which will end up with a, approximately 1500 acre Palos Verdes Nature Preserve. Open space has always been an important feature here in Rancho Palos Verdes. We, we as a city see it as a, a feature for preserving the quality of life for the residents and visitors and the businesses here and so we take great pride in that 1400 acres of open space that we've protected in perpetuity it not only serves as as a protection of habitat and protected species but it also provides passive recreation to the residents and to the general public we are so fortunate to be surrounded by an abundance of open space and natural beauty many people say it, it, it's paradise here and it really is and I feel fortunate that I work in an area that's surrounded by all this open space and I'm a huge advocate and user of the open space. Oftentimes you will see me running or walking on the trails or throughout the city. In fact over here I, I oftentimes rather than driving to, to the Golden Cove Shopping Center I will walk there. I'll put on my walking shoes and I'll take this trail right down to Golden Cove and and do my grocery shopping and walk right back. All right, well, it was great to talk with our city manager from the top of the Alta Vicente trailhead. Now we're going to travel to the bottom of the trail where we will catch up with the executive director of the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy, Adrian Mohan. Hi, I'm Adrian Mohan. I'm the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy's Executive Director. I'm so pleased to be here at Alta Vicente on Earth Day, a gorgeous day to be outdoors. The Land Conservancy, with the support of volunteers in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, uh, have planted and restored this Alta Vicente Reserve beginning about five or six years ago. And now we can enjoy these beautiful coastal sage scrub plants as you see behind me. Since our founding in 1988, it's been the mission of the Conservancy to acquire open space areas and restore them to support wildlife populations and provide a very welcoming environment for the public to enjoy uh, the local nature on the trails. And so through that effort, we've been able to to restore hundreds of acres uh, throughout the peninsula and most notably in Rancho Palos Verdes here at Alta Vicente and more recently at Abalone Cove Reserve. Right. Adrian, you have been with the Land Conservancy for over a decade and the last three years as the fearless leader. What is about your vision and your goals that you have for the organization right now? Uh, well, I would really love to ensure that the Land Conservancy is serving the community throughout the peninsula and working in close partnerships with the peninsula cities. And we really value our relationship with Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, and there's so much to celebrate about the work that the Land Conservancy and the city are doing together to improve uh, the nature preserves here that we all enjoy as residents of Rancho. Since you're referencing the partnership with the city of RPV, uh, both the city and the Land Conservancy have been making headlines for the exciting news to uh, stay tuned for an upcoming land acquisition where um, you will be acquiring, I believe, 96 acres to expand the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve together. So can you share what you have now update us on what that land deal is all about. Yes, the, the city and the Land Conservancy are so pleased to join hands in acquiring this last big piece of open space. Um, it is pretty unparalleled to see 96 acres of coastal front land that we can acquire and add uh, to the nature preserve for public enjoyment. Um, and really the the mission of this area is for a wildlife corridor to support species, particularly the Palos Verdes blue butterfly. Talking to you here on Earth Day, any special um, tips or message you'll have for our own community to become more mindful of the environment, to protect it, um, whether it's from planting their own garden, in ways that they can help be better stewards of the land? I would suggest that Everyone take a look at what they can do in their own homes to support our local environment and pollinators and butterflies such as the monarch. And we encourage planting native plants in your gardens or in your balconies and that will attract local wildlife and support them beyond the preserve. Well, we welcome the community to come and join us uh, at Alta Vicente Reserve on May 7th for our volunteer activity. It will help us control invasive plants. And we have a nature walk at Forestall Reserve uh, the second Saturday in May. And to sign up or become uh, more involved, please check out our website at pvplc.org. We want to thank the Land Conservancy for all their great work. And now I'm going to showcase another organization on the peninsula that does so much work 
to help protect the environment. The organization is Las Condolistas, and for more than 50 years, this women's organization has raised millions of dollars to give to charities that support the environment and children. And just recently, Las Condolistas held their annual spring event at the Catalina View Gardens, where the theme was the secret life of bees. And you can be sure the event was buzzing. I'm Karen Stockbridge. I am the president this year of Las Candelistas. We are a charity organization who's been on the hill here for over 50 years, raising money for local charities that support environmental and children causes. This year, our charities that this event will go towards our community's child for their Healthy Bags program, which helps feed nutritious groceries to hundreds of children. Um, the Friends of Cabrillo Marine Aquarium to help with their spring programs, free camp for underprivileged children, and also this year, 1736 Family Crisis Center, which helps children at risk of and victims of, of uh, domestic abuse. So we have a wonderful day going on. We have a luncheon. Our focus today is on the secret life of bees, and we have a cute speaker who is a beekeeper locally. She will talk all about the importance of bees and the environment and what we need to do to protect them. Um, we have many shops for sale, garden, bake shop, creations, and about 14 vendors. Um, it's just going to be a beautiful day up here, and we're so grateful for all of the support of the local community. Hi, I'm Joan Day, and um, I am the secretary of Beekeepers Association of Southern California .org. You can go to our website, find out all about bees and how to become a member of our club. And we're here in beautiful Palos Verdes at this wonderful event selling honey, honey sticks, and you can make your own wax candles. There are lots of benefits of having wax candles in your home cleans the air you know the important thing is you don't have to have bees in order to help bees so if you plant a garden have a lot of purple and blue flowers you will attract bees to your home and people are generally afraid of bees but if you sit out in your garden with a cup of coffee and watch the bees and look at the pollen on their pollen baskets and watch them gather nectar you will fall in love with bees. Congratulations to Las Condolistas for a fabulous event. And I do want to add, I am a sustaining member of this organization and grateful for the work that this group does to educate the community about the environment. And during this event, it was fun learning about the bees and the fact that one bee in its lifetime produces only one twelfth teaspoon of honey. And on that sweet note, I'm going to wrap up our Earth Day special here at Terranea. I want to thank all involved with this program and thank you, the community, for watching. Enjoy the day. I'm Liz Brown Swanson, and I hope to see you around the peninsula. Mm -hmm.